welcome back student to this new week where we are still continuing the pipe flow and last week we finished the lecture at uh, finding the equivalent roughness of pipes and said that we are going to solve one particular problem uh, but I will think it is better to take that problem after I complete uh, this particular topic. So, until this point in time what are the things that we know? We need to find out an F. F is the Darcy V bash friction factor, Darcy's friction factor and that is F is equal to phi of function of Reynolds number and epsilon by D. So, Reynolds number we can calculate if the flow is given D is the pipe diameter. So, epsilon we saw that we can find through these tables. Most of the cases for your significance in practice for the numericals you will be given the value of epsilon by d. So, if you are able to calculate the value of epsilon by d and Reynolds number then there is a dependence of these two parameters R e and d on the friction factor f and if we know the friction factor we can calculate by using these values and find out the head loss, the major head loss. Okay. So, to do that there is something called a Moody chart. So, friction factor is a function of Reynolds number and relative roughness for round pipes is a chart like this, okay, where this is Reynolds number on x axis and f you can find out and epsilon by d is plotted on the right. So, this is the oldest method of finding these friction factors, Darcy friction factor. However, for this course, of course, if you are given these uh, Moody chart, you, sh you should be able to find a corresponding Reynolds number and a corresponding epsilon by d line here and then go ahead and find out the respective f fix friction factor. But for your uh, convenience, I am going to provide you two formulas. One is a Colebrook formula which relates this friction factor f to epsilon by d and Reynolds number. Can you see there is one uh, trick in this formula? Uh, if you note you will see f is also on the left hand side and f is also on the right hand side that makes it implicit in nature. All right. Uh, but I but I still expect you to remember this formula. The solution for this formula can be done through trial and error. All right. Or you can use another formula which is totally explicit in nature, which is called Haaland equation. So here you see there is friction factor unknown is only on the left hand side. So if you know epsilon by d and you know Reynolds number, you will be able to find out the value of f. So, this equation you must remember and also this because some of the questions could be based on Colebrook formula as well. All right. So, with this thing in mind, so <coughs> we can solve the problems now. Head loss was a function of friction factor, right? I mean it was, it was dependent on friction factor and f was a function of Reynolds number and epsilon by d. So, we can find f using these two formulas or Moody chart and therefore, we will be easily able to calculate the head loss. To demonstrate that we have a problem question here that we are going to solve now. So, the question is says a badly corroded concrete pipe of diameter 1.5 meter has an equivalent sand roughness of epsilon s 15 millimeter. So, we have already been given epsilon s. A 10 millimeter thick lining is proposed to reduce the roughness value to epsilon s of 0.2 millimeter. So, uh, mm, a thick lining would be put which is 10 millimeters long and this will bring down the roughness to 0.2 millimeter. The question is for a discharge of 4 meters cube per second in the pipe calculate the power saved per kilometer of the pipe. So, if you see because of this epsilon there is going to be a head loss. So, head loss is related with energy loss, energy losses uh, if you reduce that energy loss you will save some power. So, that is the uh, idea of this particular question. So, like always we are going to start the solution on the white screen 
okay solution number 7 so we see before the lining before the measure of reducing the uh, head loss before the lining was put v1 is going to be q by a right so q was 4 meters cube per second area is pi by 4 into 1.5 whole square. So, this is going to be 2.264 meters per second all right. For this particular case Reynolds number is going to be we call it Re1 as V1 D1 by nu. So, V1 we have already find 2.264 diameter we know it was 1.5 meter and nu is 1 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, Reynolds number comes out to be 3.395 into 10 to the power 6. Similarly, epsilon S1 by D1 the value we have already been given in the question is 15 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter divided by 1.5. So, it comes to 10 to the power minus 2 all right. So, if we empirical equation of Haaland ok then we can find under root 1 by f 1 is equal to the things on the right hand side and on calculating we can get because this is an explicit formula all right. So, f 1 we can get 0 0.0379. Now, we have talked about the friction factor we have calculated before the lining was there. Uh, similarly, let us talk after the lining was put. So, after the lining put was put diameter will be reduced how much 1.50 was the diameter and lining of this. So, the diameter becomes 1.48 meters therefore, the velocity will be 4 q by a pi by 4 into 1.48 to the whole square that means 2.325 meters per second all right corresponding Reynolds number R e 2 as we call it is V 2 D 2 by nu. So, 2.325 into 1.48 divided by 1 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, it comes out to be 3.44 into 10 to the power 6. Similarly, friction epsilon S2 by D we said it has been reduced to 0.2. So, it will become 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter divided by 1.48. So, this value come out to be 1.35 into 10 to the power minus 4 all right. So, similarly using the Holland formula you can calculate that f will come out to be 0 0.0132 Holland formula. So, now we have calculated f 1 and f 2 f 1 is a friction factor before the lining was put and f 2 is a friction factor after the lining was put. So, to continue further all right. So, we are going to calculate head loss h f is equal to f l v square by 2 g d sorry
So, before the lining was put H f 1 would be 0 0.0379 that was the friction factor 1 length is 1000 and velocity was 2.264 whole square divided by 2 into 9.81 into 6.60. So, H f 1 comes out to be 6.6 meter. Similarly, we will calculate H f 2 same formula f here now the new f was 0 0.0132 into 1000 into 2.325 the velocity had changed divided by 2 into 9.81 into 1.48 and this comes out to be 2.450 meter head loss. So, savings in head you see the frictional loss before the lining was 6.6 .6 meter and after the lining is put is 2.450. So, saving in head H s is H f 1 minus H f 2 and this will come out to be 6.6 .6 minus 2.450. So, H s is 4.150 meter. Alright, this is saving in the head. Now, for power, savings in power would be nothing but gamma Q H S, right? So, gamma is nine point seven nine into four into four point one five kilowatt because we have taken this 9.79 into 10 to the power so 10 to the power 979 into g so 99790 instead we did 9.7 therefore we written in kilowatt and this will come to be 162.5 kilowatt so this is the saving in power so you see how we were able to find the major loss and the savings in major, lo major loss if we put the lining which will reduce the friction factor in a pipe. This was a quite a uh, illustrative example. All right, so just writing it down the final result here that the power saving is 162.5 kilowatt. All right. Okay, moving ahead, there is another question that says air under standard condition flows through a 4 millimeter diameter drawn tubing with an average velocity of 50 meters per second. For such conditions, the flow would normally be turbulent. However, if the precautions are taken to eliminate disturbances to the flow, it may be possible to maintain laminar flow. So, the first part is determine the pressure drop in 0 0.1 meter section of the tube if the flow is laminar and the second part is repeat the calculations if the flow is turbulent. All right. So, <coughs> we will solve this question again on the white screen. So, solution number 8. So, under standard temperature and pressure conditions rho is 1.23 kilogram per meter cube and mu is 1.79 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton second per meter square because we are talking about air. All right. Therefore, the Reynolds number will be rho V d by nu. So, if you put 1.23 into 50 because velocity of 50 meters is per second is given, diameter is 
फोर मिलीमीटर सो जीरो जीरो फोर मीटर डिवाइडेड बाई वन पॉइंट सेवन नाइन इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस फाइव एंड दिस विल कम टू बी ऑलमोस्ट थर्टीन थाउजेंड सेवन फोर्टी थ्री विच वुड नॉर्मली इंडिकेट टर्ब्यूलेंट फ्लो ऑल राइट हाउ एवर सिंस वी हैव बीन टोल्ड अज्यूम दिस इज अ लैमिनार फ्लो वी से इफ द फ्लो वर लैमिनार सो फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर विल बी गिवेन बाई सिक्सटी फोर बाई आर ई दे आर फोर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस ऑल दो इट इज टर्बुलेंट बट वी से अज्यूम दैर इट इज लैमिनार सो विल फाइंड द फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर it will come almost to 0.00467 therefore drop in 0.1 meter long horizontal section of the pipe would be डेल्टा पी इज इक्वल टू एफ इंटू एल बाई डी आवर फॉर्मूला इंटू वी स्क्वायर रो वी स्क्वायर बाई टू ऑल राइट सो डेल्टा पी इज गोइंग टू बी एफ इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फोर सिक्स सेवन लेंथ इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन डायमीटर वी ऑलरेडी नो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फोर into half into rho is 1.23 and v square is 50 and this is going to be 179 newton per meter square all right so we can calculate everything here so 179 newton per meter square all right so we can actually we could have actually have that use directly the formula for delta p but now before we go to the next part it says if the flow were turbulent then f is a function of reynolds number 2 epsilon by d so if we now if we look at the you know the I, i told you if we know what type of pipe it is we can look down the epsilon value so of course uh, it it is no, i have not given it here written in the question but if you look at the table from table epsilon will come to be 0.0015 mm okay because it is a drawn tubing drawn tubing all right so epsilon is 0.0015 for drawn tubing okay so we calculate epsilon by d which is 0.0015 by diameter is 4 mm so we get 0.00375 all right and reynolds number came out to be earlier 1.37 into 10 to the power 4 all right so if use either moody chart or haaland equation corresponding to 
Reynolds number is equal to 1.37 into 10 to the power 4 and epsilon by d of 0 0.00375 we will get f as 0 0.028. All right. Therefore, the pressure drop will be F into L by D into half rho V square and after putting 0 0.028 into length will be still be the same, diameter will still be the same, rho is 1.23. into 50 square. So, delta P is going to be 0 0.076 kilo Pascal. So, the pressure drop as you see is much much more when the flow is turbulent. All right. Uh, in the first case, it was only uh, 0 0.179 kilo Pascal. All right. So, we talk about the minor losses now. We have talked much about the major losses, but now uh, we must put our focus a little bit on the minor losses. So, minor losses is due to the change of the velocity of the flowing fluid either in the magnitude or in the direction. Okay. If the magnitude or the direction any of them would change or both will change, the losses associated with them is called minor loss in pipes. So, this is a typical flow pattern through a valve that is shown here. It will comprise of both major and minor losses. See the minor losses occur due to if there are valves present if there are T's, if there are bends in the pipes, if there are reducers and there are other appurtenances. All right. So, minor losses also have a common form of this. So, it is K L multiplied by V square by 2 G. Okay. And this K L is the minor loss coefficient. In terms of Q, we can also write Q square by 2 G A square. So, this is minor compared to friction, lo friction losses in long pipes, but can be dominant cause of head loss in shorter pipes. So, if the pipe is long, because the major loss is, major loss is given by F into L by D, you remember 2 V square by 2 G. All right. So, if the pipe is long, the major losses would be too much, but minor losses in long, this is called minor because the frictional losses come, I mean due to these phenomenon of like bending, contraction and expansion are less in case of long pipes. Therefore, it is called minor losses, but it is not always minor. If the pipes are of shorter length, the, the term minor losses actually will be dominant. Now, let us see the loss due to contraction. A sudden contraction in a pipe usually causes a marked drop in pressure in the pipe due to both increase in the velocity and loss of energy due to turbulence. That is a well established fact, correct. So, the you see the, there's, there, there is a fluid that is coming with velocity v and after the contraction, sudden contraction the velocity changes to v2. So, in this case for a contraction the head loss the minor head loss will be K C that we do not know yet into V 2 square by 2 G not V 1. So, if the V 2 you will you will you should be able to find using the continuity equation and K C either you can derive it or but most of the cases in many general scenarios it is given. Okay. So, if this is the contraction depicted by point, one, uh, point 0.2, uh, so fluid at point 0.1 goes a contraction and is at point 0.2. 
V right head loss is K L into V 2 square by 2 G and what is this K L? K L can be found out as a function of A 2 by A 1 what the area 2 and area 1 is ok ratio of the areas. So, A 2 by A 1. So, most of the time you would be given these values directly or a curve like this will appear, but for certain standard conditions you are expected to know this. So, in case of sudden contraction, okay, you see you can assume safely K L as 0 0.5. This means a 2 was 0, okay. so basically a 2 is not 0, but a 1 is so large this area is very large like reservoir compared to this area. In that case you see according to the curve this comes at around 0 0.5. So, sudden contraction when it means it will also it will always be implied that you have to assume k l is equal to 0 0.5. Please remember this. In case of a sudden contraction K L is 0 0.5 and V 2 square by 2 G when multiplied with this will give the minor losses. So, head losses due to pipe contraction may be greatly introduced. So, you see due to sudden contraction there is going to be head losses. Now, our aim as an engineer is to reduce those head losses correct and that can be done by introducing a gradual pipe transition called as confusers. So, confusers are used to introduce a gradual pipe transition something like this you see there is an angle alpha. In that case also the head loss is going to be k c dash another another coefficient k into v 2 square by 2 g in case of contraction. But what that k c is, is given by this, uh, this, this graph. So, this is k c on this side for every alpha we go and look at what this you know a 2 by a 1 ratio of a 2 by a 1 is and we pick a point for example and try to find out what that v that k c is. In such cases either you will be given this graph or you will be exactly told what the k c is alright. Now in this particular case head loss due to gradual contraction you see we have we had one equation and uh, we can also write this in form of another thing where both v 2 and v 1 could be used. So, k l into v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2 g ok in case of contraction like this you see this is 2 alpha and this is alpha and here also we are going to use for different alpha we have different k l's. In that case you do not have to worry about area of 1 and area of 2 because it will already be taken care by the velocity um, continuity equation a 1 v 1 is equal to a 2 v 2 just a different way of writing. So, this will simply give you suppose if you have 15 degree you can assume like if there is a 15 degree al alpha is there then you just take the linear interpolation as 0 0.24 will be the k l. So, one advantage here is we do not have to worry about the ratio of a 2 by a 1 this looking at the table is pretty simple I do not expect you to remember this, but uh, you can be given this type of table in your assignments and exams and could be asked to find out the value of k l and corresponding the head losses. So, in that case it will be v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2 g. All right. So, a different set of data there is a see many people have done lot of experiments and different set of data for you know gives this for different angle 
gives ratio of I mean the value of k as a ratio as a function of a 2 by a 1. So, for example, first you calculate a 2 by a 1 if it comes 0 0.50 and look at the angle let us say it was between 50 to 60 degrees. So, this k can be assumed as 0 0.06 all right and head loss can be calculated as k into v 2 square by 2. So, whole thing has already been you know given here. Now, uh, uh, I think uh, I should finish this lecture here with the gradual contraction. When we meet in the next lecture, we will talk about enlargement. When there is a pipe enlargement, what is going to be the minor loss? So, this is all for this lecture and I will see you next. Thank you so much.